Hello and welcome to another episode of Monkey Builds here on the Jenny Kirk channel. Now this week I've been building something that I think has become quite a rite of passage for anyone who builds model railway kits. It is of course the Daypole Pug. So let's see how I get on with it. <laughs> Uh, they pull kit master kits for the BR Pug have been around since apparently since the 1960s and they're pretty much unchanged. Now the kit itself is fairly simple. I would say this is a good entry level kit for someone who's looking to make their first model locomotive from kit form. It only has four decals to put onto it. Most of it's painted in the single colour and it's really easy to assemble. You can see here from the instructions, it basically assembles in three sections and you put it all together. So I went through it uh, bit by bit, starting off by essentially assembling everything into a pile to make sure that I had all the pieces and then painting them as close to what they needed to be as possible using the paints that I had around. So you can see here the majority is black. The majority of the pug is black. It's one of those things, BR had a black colour scheme for it. You could go for something else if you wanted, but uh, you really don't really need to. Remember to paint all sides. I did miss a few bits here and there, so at the end of it I had to paint them again, but never mind, I had to paint it over again anyway. It's just one of those things you have to do. So when we got to assembling, I was following the instructions, making sure that bit by bit I was building it up as the instructions said. So the first part you do is uh, well, it's the uh, wheels and the uh, locomotion for it. So you can see those bits in red, some of the bits in grey. Those are the parts I'm looking for. And also looking at the wheels. So the wheel assembly is essential. The biggest issue that I had is that because these kits are now so old, there are a few bits where there are a few flashing problems. So you've got to make sure that you cut those right to the point uh, before you even get any further than to assemble it. It's essential that uh, things are balanced properly, otherwise you'll end up with what I actually did in the end. I thought I'd go it all, but I didn't. One side of the uh, top of the locomotive didn't quite sit properly onto the base, which meant that uh, I have a, a, a locomotive that's on a slight angle, and I can't do anything about it. It's just that's how it is now. So make sure you've got everything. Get a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper if you need to and sand it down. Make sure you've got it right. But the actual assembly, it's really, really well worked out. As you can see here, I'm just putting the bits of the uh, the main part of the boiler together and it's two pieces that clip together and then assemble onto a big block that will hold the majority of the kit together. It is so well worked out that you assemble it just really quickly and I was very impressed with that. I have to say, I was a little bit apprehensive because I've never built a model locomotive before, but this one came together just so quickly. And the best part of putting a kit together is when you see it start to take shape. Well, this thing starts to take shape the moment that you're starting to put that boiler together, the moment that you're starting to put the uh, locomotion together and the drive gear and all of that. So each part, it really feels like you're building something and it's substantial right from the start, which gives you a great sense of accomplishment even when you haven't quite finished. And now you can see here the base, it just sort of slides into place and you glue it. There are guides on the bottom of the main assembly that the boiler sits onto so you really can't get this in the wrong position. Everything is laid out for you and guide you along. It's just I'm just really impressed. If you've got a kid who wants to try their hand at building a locomotive then give them this kit. It's small it's not too big for them to be able to handle themselves and it guides you through all the way. It really is very impressive. My only issue with it, like I said, there's, there's flashing. You have to trim down the wheels and you have to be really careful with it as well because it's very, very easy to trim off a little bit too much of the wheel and then you'll end up with a problem where the, uh, the wheels aren't quite level. But if you're... If you're willing to put in the time and the care, it should come together all right. It's unfortunate that the, the flashing is to that level these days, but 
these, my goodness, these models are like 60, the kit is 60, almost 70 years old, no, 60 years old. It's an old kit, so you are going to have these issues. Perhaps it's time to get new mouldings, but then again, this kit is incredibly cheap. It's a starter one, it's great for kit bashing into something else. You can use it for all kinds of things. And the only reason that it's possible to do all of that with confidence is because it is that cheap. And if it was more expensive, I think a few people would be put off. So you really have to take the rough with the smooth. And there is a fair bit of rough when it comes to the flashing. But the rest of it, I was very impressed. It looks good. It's got good riveting detail. All the parts are there. Even the backhead detail on the boiler, it's, it's there. You can paint that up and make it look really nice. And I did put a fair bit of effort into uh, making the uh, back end detail stick out a little bit when I was putting it together. You can't really see it once it's all together, but it's nice to know it's there. And I know I did uh, mark down the Cessna for having the fire extinguisher and things like that with regard to detail that you know is there, but no one can see. However, it is more possible to actually see the back head. You can see it here while I'm assembling it on the, the monitor, on the screen even. Uh, you can see it more here, so I think it's better to get away with the detail on this kind of uh, kit than hiding a fire extinguisher under a chair. Now, what else is there to say about this? Take time. It is a simple kit, and it's deceptively simple at times. Putting together the top here, where we're putting the, uh, the cabin together, it's very easy to accidentally push some of those sides out of position, just putting a little bit too much force on them, bending them out of the way so that everything won't assemble properly. You'll have to take your time, measure up regarding the top, like I'm doing here, putting the top on, then taking it back off and making sure that everything is lined up properly, and then go at it and make sure that it's assembled. There you can see the part of the... <laughs> the locomotive if I forgot to uh, paint. I just got that later. It's not a big problem. But what I was also impressed with is the amount of detail that's gone into these uh, buffers and things like that. You assemble the buffers in parts. Now, that could have easily just been one big block of plastic because the majority of this is big box of blocks of plastic that you stick together. But the buffers you paint and assemble into the uh, frame. So it actually has that little bit of extra and it's quite nice. And then there's these little side detail bits, the pipe work that I'm just cutting off the sprue here. So they go on the sides, they assemble in nicely and it all looks really nice and comes together. I was incredibly impressed. The best part would have been if I'd managed to get all of the flashing off on the uh, drivetrain and things like that, I could have had the locomotive actually run. And the uh, locomotion would have worked. Unfortunately, it sticks a little bit because of flashing that I hadn't noticed was there. So it didn't quite come together as uh, the design would have allowed, but it would have been nice if it had done it. But also it's got the assembly so you can link things to it if you want, which, yeah, it's, it's nice to be there, I suppose. But if it hadn't been there, I wouldn't have complained because it does kind of get in the way of the chain that I've just placed on the front and a few other little bits and pieces, but never mind. All in all though, this is a very impressive piece of kit and I was very happy to assemble this. It took about, let's say, maybe two hours of careful uh, positioning to make it all work, but I think it was time very well spent. I had an awful lot of fun putting it together. It felt accomplished almost from the start when things started to come together straight away. And given that you assemble it in essentially two bits and then assemble into one big block at the end, it's very straightforward. It's well thought out, well constructed. My only downside on this is the fact that it's so old that the flashing is getting to be a bit of a problem and starting to get in the way of some of the mechanisms. But other than that, it's a very impressive piece of kit and I really did enjoy putting it together. And here it is. The final thing, I've put the decals on. The decals do have a little bit of an issue of, you see the plastic around the outside of, of what the decal is. But aside from that, they went on very, very nicely and I'm really impressed. Well, overall, I actually had a lot of fun putting this together. I really like the way that the pieces for the drivetrain and things like that all mesh together. It looks really good when it's finished and I had a lot of fun painting it. So all in all, even though it's actually a kit that's older than I am, I think it still has 
a very solid place in anyone's uh, model making repertoire and uh, anyone's uh, collection of things that they've built. So I'm going to give it a very solid 8 out of 10. I had a lot of fun building this one and I think you will too if you give it a try. Okay, that's all we've got time for this time. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, remember to click that like button, share this with your friends so that they'll know a good kit to give a try when they see one, and do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. Jenny will be back on Monday with the Monday Club, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk Michael Lockie Helen Sink Peter Bolton Brian and Dorothy Mudd Gary Lewis David Quinn Sparky107107 George Botterini Chris Moss Robert Steers MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products Sam Yates Dale Williams John N. from NC NYMRish Jonathan Foster Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, and NI Railways 4000 class. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.